Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be reviewing the SH Figure Arts Beast Gohan from the movie Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Now I have watched the movie but prior to watching it I was spoiled on Beast Gohan and his design as well as the final moments of the movie or at least the final moments of the final fight and I expected quite a bit more out of Beast Gohan if I'm going to be honest just because I saw that one moment and saw the design and I was like oh this must be really cool especially if we're getting figures from it much like a lot of other Dragon Ball Z figures or Dragon Ball figures in general usually they'll make a figure of something if there's enough content to make something or we'll just have a lot of static figures based on simple designs just because it works well. Case in point the original Super Saiyan Gogeta from the Fusion Reborn movie didn't really get a lot of time in the sun but we had heaps of figures and games and things like that based on him just because uh, it was really cool and you can get a decent amount out of him. Similar thing with Beast Gohan here. He shows up, kicks Cell Max and does the special beam cannon and that's it. And we somehow got several figures of him uh, even though he does have an iconic final moment but we got several figures out of him with multiple face expressions, uh, folded arms, effect pieces, things like that for what is really the final note in the movie. And while I thought Beast Gohan was going to be the highlight of the movie, and I thought Gohan in general would have been the highlight of the movie considering how much merchandise he has, uh, it really is more Piccolo's movie, so it's weird that we don't have more merchandise of him. But this rant has gone on long enough, today we're going to review the Beast Gohan SH Figure Arts. So taking a quick look at the box, it's the standard Dragon Ball design that I have gone through many times on this channel. If you don't know already, it's a clear window on the front, a promo image on the side. When you rotate it around, there's comic book panels on the side, giving brief glimpses of the figure, sometimes good, sometimes bad. In this case, they're actually pretty good. On the back, there's a ton of different promo images showing what you can get out of this figure as well as rough overview of the accessories. And on the other side, there's a clear window with Gohan Beast's name written on it. And on the very bottom is a final promo image of the figure. And it's actually cool on this one because it has both Beast Gohan and Ultimate Gohan. And I like to open up the box from the side because it completes the promo image on the front. And in this case, it looks quite nice. Now taking Beast Gohan out of the box, you can see the accessories that he comes with. So we've got the figure itself as well as four faces for Beast Gohan and one face for the Ultimate Gohan figure. Because so far all of the premium Bandai SH Figure Arts figures for Superhero have come with an alternate piece for the base Gohan, Ultimate Gohan figure. So. He's got th four faces for Beast Gohan, one face for Ultimate Gohan, folded arms, accessories, four pairs of hands, and one special beam cannon hand without effect, and one special beam cannon hand with effect, which makes him the first SH Figure Arts figure with the special beam cannon, which is kind of awkward, to be honest. And you also get a stand to hold up the special beam cannon, because it is a little bit heavy, or more that the weight is distributed awkwardly. Normally I would go over the general aesthetics of the figure, but I think it will work better if we do a direct size comparison. So here is Beast Gohan next to Ultimate Gohan and next to Super Saiyan Gohan. Now the Super Saiyan Gohan accessories were sold with the Gamma 1 figure, but it's effectively just changed the aesthetic of him and it makes for a good comparison shot. So we've got Gohan in all of his main forms, so Super Saiyan, Ultimate, and Beast, and they're all roughly about the same height, as should be the case, and roughly the same build. Now Beast Gohan is slightly different, and we will get into that. But here they are all side by side, and you can see that just a simple hair colour can change the aesthetic of a figure quite a bit, as well as a hairstyle. Now one of the other things that you can do with Beast Gohan, because his body type is so similar to the base form Ultimate Gohan, it stands to reason that you can swap the heads between the figures, and you can do that with most SH figure arts anyway. So here's what Beast Gohan looks like on Ultimate Gohan's body and Ultimate Gohan's head on Beast Gohan's body, because the chest is different and there is battle damage on Beast Gohan. So it allows for a cleaner look for Beast Gohan as well as a battle damage look for Ultimate Gohan. 
Here is the glasses normal hair face that comes with Gamma 2. Here is the Piccolo cloak thrown over the Beast Gohan body. And it's actually a pretty cool aesthetic if I'm being honest. And here is the Super Saiyan head on the battle damaged body. So you can change the aesthetic of the figure pretty easily. And all of these parts are fully swappable, which is nice. Now, the main aesthetic of the Beast Gohan figure is pretty much exactly what I said about the Ultimate Gohan figure. This is roughly the 3.0 mold, or the sort of standard that SH Figure Arts is doing lately, which is a decently bulkier frame and a much more fun figure to get a hold of and handle. So the chest's bulkier, the arms are bulkier, the legs are more solid. That does change the aesthetic quite a bit, like some people don't like how the upper thighs are usually designed on these, especially on the trunks that was released recently. I don't really mind it, to be honest. And I do like the bulkier look, it sort of fits Dragon Ball quite a bit more, in my opinion at least. But the thing that they've changed on this Gohan, besides little battle damage here or there, which is appreciated, is the design of the upper chest. Now, functionally, it is about the same, so there is a joint cut in the lower chest, but it's hidden by the upper gi. Now, the gi this time is a flexible material, similar to what they've been doing lately with uh, the Piccolo cloak or the Turles cloak and, and a lot of the other bendable or malleable cloaks on other figure arts that they've done lately, like Power. And basically, it's an aesthetic choice to make the joints less visible and make the figure just look better. Now in this case it's covering over a lot of joints which does actually limit the figure a little bit. It's a bit of a shame and it doesn't limit it that much but it is noticeable enough especially in super dynamic poses. And I don't really know how this soft material will hold up over time if you've just got him stuck in a dynamic pose if when you put him back into a neutral pose if it'll be hard to sort of reset that mold um, but that's something that is much further down the line that we won't know until later but generally the aesthetic of the figure is quite good everything else is quite similar to the ultimate gohan the other major difference is obviously Beast Gohan's massive hair. Now, I fully understand why Beast Gohan's hair looks like this. I fully understand why the transformation happened the way it did. It's a cool sort of nostalgia trip and homage to the Super Saiyan 2 transformation during the Cell Saga. And it was cool, and I do know what they're going for. But the absolute mountain of hair that he gets looks pretty dumb. I think it looks honestly okay in the SH figure arts. It doesn't look as bizarre as it did in the movie, but it looked really, really dumb in the movie. Like, it was cool, but it's overshadowed by being really, really dumb. And you can make it look cool in different camera angles, and that's what the movie did, but in very static poses, and a lot of the static figures that are being released for Beast Gohan, it really sheds a light on how weird this design is and it's I'm still coming to terms with it it's just a bit weird the figure does make it look cool thankfully um, but it, there's just no going getting around it it just looks weird to me and it looks okay in the figure like I said uh, there is some slight shading at the base of the hair so it does look decently nice there could be a little more shading throughout especially in the sort of deeper um, spikes of the hair but it is what it is but generally faces look good and the hair looks good and it completes the aesthetic even though the figure itself is very similar to the ultimate gohan it feels different so next up we'll do articulation so there's a ball joint at the head i believe it's a double ball joint and it can get pretty good range of motion although it does have the problem that a lot of uh, sh figure arts with like prominent hair have which is when you bend down the head it might bump off the faceplate similar to like the Chainsaw Man Denji thing and the Super Saiyan Vegeta thing it's just uh, it comes with the territory really but you can sort of work it especially with the neck joint to get a bit more out of it 
but it is a fairly unlimited ball joint and it is quite good to handle. His arm can move out that far, which is a bit restricted, but you can rotate it around uh, to get it straight. And this comes down to the flexible material and you can sort of see it bending and flexing as I play around with it. And I'm just going to bring in the Ultimate Gohan so you can kind of see they get about the same rotation in the arm. But it's just the base Ultimate Gohan is easier to flex around. So there's a swivel at the upper arm. There's a double bend at the elbow and a ball hinge at the wrist. Now the ab crunch is hidden by the rubberized gi, so he can crunch forward that far. I don't know if it's really that noticeable on camera and he can get a bit of a rocking side to side. And that rubber material is on the back as well. He can kick forward that far and back not at all, which is the same as the ultimate Gohan figure. He can do a really good splits, which is pretty common for a lot of the 3.0 figures, which is good. He's got a double bend at the knees, which, love it or hate it, that's how they're structured. I actually don't mind it. Uh, he's got a rotation at the heel, or at the ankle. He's got a pivot at the heel and a toe bend, as well as a swivel at the upper thigh. He does have a butterfly joint in the arms, but it is noticeably restricted by the rubberized body and he is in comparison to the ultimate gohan where again it's just easier to get him into a sort of uh, arms together pose or at least arms straight ahead pose so pretty good articulation it's just that it is hampered by aesthetic choices which i get what they did and you can easily just swap the head over to the ultimate Gohan and get a better figure out of it. But I can see some people being upset about it. It doesn't bother me that much, if I'm being honest. Uh, as for faces, we'll start with the ultimate Gohan face, which is him teeth gritted about to turn into beast Gohan. So he's got red pupils and looks fierce. Uh, it's a pretty good accessory, if I'm being honest. One of the better and not as intrusive and annoying accessories for like the DLC pack type stuff for superhero, like having all the Super Saiyan faces locked behind Gamma 1 and the Piccolo cape and and base face uh, being locked behind Gamma 2 was a bit annoying. Windswept hair is a little annoying for Broly and the happy powered down head for Pan is annoying as well. The Kamehameha effect for Piccolo doesn't make any sense at all, but uh, we got it for him, or at least it's coming for him at the time of recording. But this is just a simple face for Ultimate Gohan, so I don't think people will be that annoyed, especially since most people would get Ultimate Gohan and Beast Gohan. So for Beast Gohan, we've got a neutral face, which looks quite good. We've got a smiling face, which is sort of sinister looking, and I kind of dig it. And before watching the movie, I thought this face was specifically referencing a moment. I can't quite remember if it did happen in the movie but I do kind of like the the sinister smile it looks quite cool he's got a teeth gritted sort of angry battle face and he's got a shouting face looking to the side which is specifically for the special beam cannon because he's looking to the side and he's also got the folded arms accessory which is pretty standard for a lot of SH figure arts it's still annoyingly hard to put on and I don't like doing it. It is awkward with the flexible material as well. Just a whole other thing of getting the arms to butterfly and putting them in. But you can get it. And with those accessories, you can get some pretty decent poses out of him. With a flight stand, you can get a bit more as well. And it's nice having Gohan having a charging special beam cannon sort of pose or being able to do anything like that, really. Because it's just cool fan service and something that they didn't necessarily need to do. It's cool just having a normal special beam cannon hand for an SH figure arts, let alone having one with an effect piece. And you can get some nice shots. The special beam cannon piece itself, you do need the stand, or at least I feel you need the stand. Otherwise you need to do some awkward balancing with uh, his fingers and ball joints and things like that. It doesn't feel like the best fit. And I have heard the effect piece has broken on a few people. 
so just be careful with it. Like the way I did it, I attached the base onto the effect piece and then put the effect piece onto the arm carefully. And I felt that that worked pretty well. The effect piece itself is very well detailed, it's a nice clear plastic fused to the special beam cannon hand, and there is some paint put on the very tip of the cannon. And with that, you can get a good amount out of this figure. You can get more than he had screen time in the movie, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but it's got all the essentials, and a lot of these accessories are compatible with the Ultimate Gohan, if you so choose, you can give Ultimate Gohan a special beam cannon, you can give him folded arms, I'm pretty sure. I didn't try it myself, but I, I doubt they would have structured the arms completely differently. But yeah, that's pretty much Beast Gohan. He's a pretty solid figure, not my favourite, but he accomplishes what he needs to do. He's just a pretty aesthetically striking SH figure arts and definitely has a lot of shelf presence thanks to that hair and colour scheme. And if you're already collecting the superior figures and like to collect different forms of characters, this one's already a must. And Tamashii Nations have been doing pretty good lately this year and the superhero line in general has been pretty damn good. So I do recommend the figure, but I do still think that Ultimate Gohan is a better figure, just lacking in accessories. And the whole DLC type thing is kind of annoying. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.